All right, guys. So on the Eagle platform, obviously their stock batteries are very expensive. And honestly, we're having some issues with this. This is a first gen five amp hour. It's about $299 to buy this new. The issues we're noticing is the smaller 2.5s and some of the 5.0s, um, they're no good after a year or two, especially if you're not using them. And that's very disconcerting, especially with the cost. And just as they're getting out of warranty, they quit working. <laughs> So I bought an aftermarket. This is the, it's been well reviewed. The DTK, sorry, DTK 56 volt, five amp hour. So we have a different kind of meter on, has a BMS, says it communicates. I put it on our Nexus here and sure enough, it does communicate. So that is some good news. You can see here. So I open up the app and sure enough, our DTK battery shows five amp hours. So we're going to do a capacity test. So I have a, a meter here to test the capacity. We're going to run it through a thousand watts here. So it's going to have a strong pull through a heater, a ceramic heater. And we'll, we'll see how much um, wattage this actually has, if it's five amp hour or less. But it's identifying as a five amp hour through the BMS. So it says it's capable of uh, 1200 watts of draw. So let's see what she does. We're going to turn her on here. That's going to activate our uh, power outlets here. Obviously we see that here and then we're going to turn on our draw. All right. So we went in and kicked on our draw. When you are running uh, the higher wattage, it's only the, this plug for some reason, only when it turns on, I'm not really sure why never discovered that before, but I only have one battery on here and it's this aftermarket D uh, DK. DTK, geez, I can't say that. All right, so we have our monitor here, so we're gonna take a look as we run a thousand watts to see how much wattage this will actually push. So we turn that on. So we're seeing our wattage used to shoot up here. Just kick it on full. So 800, almost 900, going on a thousand, a thousand, 1100 watts, still going. Got a lot of usage here. So this is really gonna put at the limit of what this thing can do. Probably wanna bring this thing down to low because this is drawing probably too much power. But we're gonna bring it on low. So we get a more moderate uh, pull here so we don't max this thing out, but it was handling it. It pulled 1200 watts, it wasn't dying. So it's saying we have 16 minutes, 17 minutes at 600 watts. So let's do that math. So we did turn in a low. It, it says about, well, now it says 17, but it said 18 a minute ago, pulling 600 watts. So on that, roughly about average, it's thinking it only has about 200 watts, you know, 180, 200 uh, watts of power in this. It should be over 200, but we do have an efficiency gap there because again, there's an efficiency drop from converting this to here. The efficiency, I do believe is around 90%. So that would put this over 200 total storage watts. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go and stop this test for right now, and we're going to pull the, uh, the other five amp hour we have, and we're going to see what it does when we plug it in and do the same exact test of how much power it says that this one's going to have. All right, we just threw that on there, we went up to 33 minutes, we're gonna pull this one off, and it says we have 18 minutes, so it says, it's thinking that these batteries are about the same capacity. And that's just maybe from the BMS marking, who knows. But this battery was roughly almost 100%, and that one was 90%. It's already dropping. So right now I'm leaning towards, um, this is an actual five amp hour battery for a hundred bucks that will work, again, with the Nexus. So we're gonna switch them back. I like how it's seamless we can add a battery once it communicates we have the time added and we can remove a battery and kind of see where we're at so now this is a has only has 12 minutes left that was kind of weird it did that but we'll see what happens it does have um only one bar down now it says 11 minutes so let's give it some time we'll see how much time we actually get out of this and we'll do our math Okay, so we've turned off here. Um, still had uh, two bars left on here. It got down to about three minutes and it shut off. So we got roughly about 10 minutes of run out of it before we lost it. And it was only drawing 600 
watts. So one of two things is happening. Either our efficiency is absolutely horrible, which this battery is kind of hot. I mean, it's probably about 100 degrees. Probably throw a uh, thermometer to that and see where it's at. Either this thing is horribly inefficient or, you know, maybe it just it stops pulling power before that batteries actually die. So we're going to go and throw the authentic battery on and see what this one does in comparison. I'll turn her on here and we'll give it a, a time here. So it says it's going to run for a little while here. So we're gonna turn this on, turn it on to low, ramp up our 600 watts. It's on its way up. We're waiting on it to calculate its time. Usually there's a little delay here. And we'll see how long this battery runs it for and see if they if they're right on par, or if our, our problem's not with the batteries, but with actually the inefficiency of the Eli 6 this power station, because this one's falling just as fast as the other one did. Um, again, we had two bars left on this before it conked out. We'll look at the percentages here in a moment. So we'll let this run and see uh, when it shuts down and where we're at. So we're a few minutes in right now. The time is coming on just as fast as it did with this one, which is leading me to believe that the capacity is correct on this battery. Also, if you notice the voltage, we have a nice voltage drop. So I really think that the efficiency of the inverter in here is really where the problem is coming from, unfortunately. And um, I'm hearing people say that the inefficiency is upwards of 30%, so 70% pass-through efficiency after turning on the fan and all the other doodads that are inside this, uh, this inverter that it does use a lot of parasitic power before it can actually uh, produce 120 volts, which as you can see, it's not even really doing that. Um, so we'll let this run out and we'll see where we're at and see where our percentages in our batteries and kind of where it cuts out and the batteries are no longer to, able to keep close enough to 56 volts to provide the voltage. I'm pretty sure the cutoff is because this voltage is dropping so it's turning off the unit even before the battery's dead because it, it, these batteries can't provide enough juice basically after that point. Same thing again. So we got to about three minutes. We've been on for about 11, almost 12 minutes. So this one lasts a little longer. But uh, again, we're, we're showing a low power and we are, this actually kicked on low power before it shut off. It still hasn't shut off, it's still running, but it's, it's warning we're about to lose lose this so we're going to go and stop it now um there's no sense going any longer and we're going to this battery is hot <laughs> still this battery it's also hot i think that's part of the problem here so we'll add these both back on again and let's take a look at the app and see what the percentages are so looking at the app here we have 21 percent left in our authentic ego battery and only 9% left in our DTK battery. This battery has about 20% left. This one's pretty much ran all the way down. We had about 10 minutes running time, 11 minutes roughly out of this one, 12, almost 13 minutes out of this one. If we do the math, there's 20% remaining in this battery. If it's rated at 280 watt hours, complete capacity, which is five amp hours at 56 volts, we are roughly seeing about 30, 5% waste between this battery into the inverter into the heater which is extraordinarily high it's crazy high uh, the efficiency of this thing is atrocious but with that said doing the same math for our uh, generic battery it only puts this at like three and a half maybe four amp hours still not a bad deal seeing that a uh, two and a half amp hour version of this battery is 100 you know on sales 180 bucks it is still a good deal to get one of these five amp hours, even though they're not five amp hours. Also, they tend to run a little bit hotter. Uh, the cells are not as good as the cells in here. Also, with that said, we'll see what the longevity is. We're gonna give this some time. We have some other stuff to play with. Uh, watch the channel, like, and subscribe. Um, I have the Ego Mini Bike coming soon, and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna put that battery in there and see what it does compared to this five amp hour, also the two seven halves that come with the, with that so is it worth it yeah if you're blow you know using it for a blower or just simple stuff i think that this five amp hour generic battery is worth it especially seeing that the uh, two and a half amp hours are conking out after a year or two 
and they're not covered under warranty past that point, you're probably better off buying one of these generic ones and just taking your chances than buying an authentic Ego and then basically, you know, you have a brick after a year or two because I think, honestly, you're probably going to end up with the same thing. So please, again, like, subscribe, and share. Got some more content coming, more fun stuff to look at. And um, again, make your own decision here. I will have the affiliate link in the description for this battery if you choose to buy it. So far, I think it's worth it. 100 bucks, you can't go wrong comparatively speaking when the authentic batteries are that much more expensive and they're showing to not be reliable either so what's the point of buying authentic if it's not going to be reliable right well keep on uh, wrenching out there guys and i'll see you on the next one